Matt Scherzer is dealing with the strain Terry's major muscle and he's projected to miss the remainder of the regular season. Due to this muscle's location, this is something that is most often involved with throwing and pitchers do tend to struggle with this. So since some people may not be too familiar with it, I wanna go ahead and focus on that with this video. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel. If you're not familiar with me, my name is Nick Gallo and I'm a doctor of physical therapy. And with this channel, I go over sports injuries so that they are a little bit easier to understand. I explain them and I also go over what exactly to expect when that person is in physical therapy for that particular injury. If you like this content and you wanna see more of it, go ahead and please hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because I will be making more videos in the future regarding sports injuries, rehab, and other physical therapy related content. Also, if you have any comments or questions, please leave those in the comment section below. So here I have a model of the shoulder joint. The shoulder joint is made up of three bones. They are the humerus, which is the arm bone right here, which is that ball joint. Right here we have the scapula, also known as the shoulder blade, which is known as that socket joint. And those two together are going to form what we know as the glenohumeral joint, which is what we most often associate with as being the shoulder. One other bone that is located in the shoulder joint too is this clavicle right in through here. We've referred to this as to being the collarbone. All three of these bones play a major role in the whole shoulder complex, but for the sake of this video, we're going to just focus on this glenohumeral joint, the ball and socket between the humerus here, attaching to the glenoid, which is that concave structure on the scapula. Now, a lot of shoulder stability comes from these ligaments here. They also come from the rotator cuff, which is actually comprised of four different muscles. They are the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, the teres minor, and we also have the subscapularis. Those four muscles together comprise what we know as the rotator cuff, which is going to contribute to overall shoulder stability. However, the muscle that is of focus here is known as the teres major. The teres major is going to originate on the posterior aspect of the inferior angle of the scapula. So that's going to be right in through here. And it's going to come across and it's going to insert actually onto the humerus. The teres major is highly involved in throwing because it's going to do internal rotation. So if we have our arm here and we're going through a throwing motion, external rotation is pulling the arm back and coming forward like this is going to be internal rotation. So when a pitcher or any type of thrower is going through a throwing motion, as they bring the arm back, they are stretching the teres major, and as they come through, they are contracting the teres major. The teres major is actually going to act synergistically with a big muscle known as the latissimus dorsi, or the lat, because they're going to do similar functions. The teres major and the latissimus dorsi are highly involved in the acceleration and the follow through of the pitching motion. So anytime you have a thrower that's going to be throwing a lot of pitches, they are stressing both of these muscles. A lot of times the teres major gets strained because it is very small. Now isolated tears of this muscle, the teres major are on the rare side, but the people that are more likely to get them are your overhead athletes, such as pitchers, baseball players, volleyball players, anybody going overhead. These people usually present with a sharp pain in the shoulder or the armpit or the upper arm area because that's exactly where the muscle is located. If somebody comes into the clinic and we suspect that they have something like a teres major strain or something along those lines, what we're going to do is we're essentially going to test the strength of that particular muscle. So we'll put them in an adduction and an internal rotation position, have them resist. If that reproduces their pain, then we think that an internal rotator like the teres major is being involved. And what we'll do is we'll do the opposite. We'll go ahead and put them in an externally rotated position and also feel for the location for where their pain is. Now, the positive news in this case is that as of right now, sources are saying that surgery is not indicated. And this is because there is a grading system with these muscle strains. That is, of course, grades one, two, and three. In a grade one muscle strain, you're getting essentially stretching of the muscle, but you're not getting any tearing. In a grade two, this is where we're getting some partial tearing of the muscle. And finally, in a grade three, this is when you get a full rupture. In a full rupture, most likely this is going to indicate surgery. And in grades one and two, this is where surgery usually is not indicated and they have been saying that this is more of a low grade strain. So this makes it seem like he's anywhere between a grade one or a grade two. In a grade one to a grade two muscle injury of the teres major, usually what we're looking at is a time period of about four to six weeks. This really just depends on the person and it depends on the extent of if there is any partial tearing. And usually it's pretty easy to determine if someone has a partial tear because you're going to get some bruising around that area. We don't know that as of right now, but that is something that we definitely consider when we see them in the clinic. 
Usually treatment initially starts with rest and we wanna basically make that person as comfortable as possible. We want time for those fibers to heal if there is any partial tearing. Then after that, we slowly work in range of motion and we start to do a lot of strengthening exercises to essentially support the shoulder. And we wanna rebuild back that teres major. So we'll do a lot of internal rotation exercises to strengthen everything, to get them back to basically where they were before. Then when Scherzer is finally appropriate, he's gonna go through sports specific training and they're probably gonna get him throwing when he is finally pain free. So if I happen to hear any updates regarding his case, I'll be sure to update everybody in the comment section. And if you happen to hear anything, please feel free to update me as well. And that's it as of right now regarding Max Scherzer's most recent muscle strain. Unfortunately, it does seem that he will be likely to miss the remainder of the season. So I do agree with the timetable there, but it really just depends on if it is a grade one or a grade two. So if it's a grade one, obviously his recovery time is gonna be a lot quicker than a grade two. So it depends basically on the degree of that partial tearing, if that is what he's dealing with. So unfortunately right now, it does look like he's gonna miss the remainder of the regular season, but hopefully it looks like he'll have a pretty fast recovery if it is on a grade one side. Once again, thank you for watching. If you really enjoy this content, please feel free once again to subscribe to the channel because I will be making more videos like these in the future. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you next time.